This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. <clears throat> okay, welcome everyone. Bruchem Abba and Parshas Vayishlach. We're going to speak about a subject, one of my favorite topics. A topic, a recurrent theme in uh, the Shirem. We spoke about it a number of times. Um, and Ein Beis HaMedosh B'li Chidosh tonight, Shir sponsored by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Eli Sizma, Elizech uh, Nishmas, his grandfather, Reb Chaim Anshel Ben Asher, who is Nifter this Sunday, Neshama Shev and Aliyah, B'yomel Tziyosha for his whole family, Ad B'yaz Gal Tzedek. So we have over here, Yaakov Avinu is about to encounter his brother Esav. Esav's coming with 400 men. And uh, Esav's coming for the jugular. Esav's coming, uh, he means business. Esav's not coming uh, to do business. Esav's coming to take care of business. And Yaakov was very afraid. The Pasuk says, Vayira Yaakov, Ma'od Vayetzerlo. Yaakov was afraid and he was distressed. So Vayachat says, Ha'am Asherito, he split up the camp. He split up the Hatsoin, the sheep, the Hasabakar, the cattle, the Hagamalim, and the camels, the Shnei Machanais. So Yaakov Avinu, Rashi says, prepared for three things. Yaakov Avinu prepared for war. He prepared with tefillah, and he prepared with shaychad, you know. We always, uh, it's always a good idea to utilize all three mm-hmm. avenues. Okay, mm-hmm. so the question on this Pasuk is, the, per, the Pasuk seems to be uh, superfluous. Once it says, Vayira Yaakov, Yaakov was afraid, why does it have to say, Vayitzer, like he was distressed? What is that adding? So Rashi says, Vayira, what was Yaakov afraid of? Shema Yehareg, lest he be killed. Yaakov was afraid that Esau would kill him. Vayetzer loy, and he was distressed. What was he distressed about? Im sachiram. If he would kill others. Yaakov was afraid that he would kill others. So the first question on the table is, why does it beat around the bush? He was afraid he would kill others. You should say, straight up, he was afraid he's going to kill Esav. I don't know why it says others. You know, Esav had a name. At Esav's bris, the Mayol, uh, well, I don't know who they were mechabed at Esav's bris to the Kriya Sashem, they're mechabed probably Avram Avinu. He didn't do that. What? Esav didn't do this. Good point. But if he would have had a bris, who would they have been mechabed? <laughs> Esav, they couldn't do the bris. Why? Because he was, uh, he was ruddy, he was red. And then at his bar mitzvah, he said, uh, thanks, but no thanks. But he must have had a Kriya Sashem, No? Probably a Yaakov's bris, they were mechabed kriya shem. I don't know who was zoicha to get that kriya shem. But uh, probably they hid it because nobody wants to take credit that they gave Esav's name. But be it as I may, Esav had a name. Why does it say that Yaakov was afraid? Shema Yaharoig hu asachem. It should say Shema Yaharoig hu asachem. That's question number one. What? Esav was coming with other men also. Uh-huh. So, so, okay, so say, you know, Esav v'anoshav. These people, why are we uh, being so vague, so... Uh, so ambiguous. And secondly, yeah. And so say the name. The question is right. Say the name. More concerned about his brother than the other. Okay. So the second question is, and okay, let's say somehow Achirim is a code word for Esav. Didn't want to say his name. V'shem Hashem Yerkov. But at the end of the day, why would he be afraid he would kill Esav? Esav is coming to kill him. And there's a halachic principle: Habal lahargacha, Hashkem lahargu. Someone's co- coming to kill you. You got to kill them first, right? We learn out from the pasuk: In b'machteras, you might say haganov. Ain loy domim. If, if somebody's digging a tunnel under the house he, and he's coming to steal money, you're allowed to kill him because he knows you're not just going to hand over your money, you're going to fight for your life, so he's coming to kill you, so you're allowed to kill him. So the Mizrahi wants to know, why was Yaakov upset he would have to kill Esau? He was required, he was permitted to kill Esau. So the Mizrahi says that Yaakov wasn't really concerned that he would have to kill Esau per se, but if he were to kill Esau, he was afraid Yitzchak would curse him. So he didn't want to kill Esau, he was afraid he would have to kill Esau, and then Yitzchak would not be happy, and Yitzchak would uh, issue him some kind of klala, and that's what Yaakov was uh, Yaakov was afraid of. Now, the Mepharshim struggle with this. What? Do, what? Yeah, because uh, Lamaisa Yitzchak seemed to have loved Esav more, and you know maybe, maybe uh, he wouldn't get the full story. And at the end of the day, he would hear that Yaakov killed his favorite son. So he was scared. He was afraid about that. He was distressed over that. There are a number of very interesting pshatim in this Rashi. Exactly what was Yaakov afraid of if he would have to kill Esav? <coughs> Rabbi Shur Leib Diskin says, a very beautiful pshat, we spoke about this a few weeks ago, 
that when Rivka tells Yaakov to scram to get out of town because Esau's going to kill him, he says, ah, you know what, go run away, and when uh, Esau calms down, I'll call you back. Because otherwise, otherwise I'm afraid, yeah, otherwise I'm afraid that uh, he's going to kill you. But Rivka says a very unusual expression. Rivka says, I'm not just afraid he's going to kill you. He says, <laughs> Lama gam Why should I lose, lose both of you on the same day? So Rashi's bothered. What, what do you mean? Rivka was afraid that she would lose, lose both of them. She's not going to lose both of them. She's afraid Esau's going to kill Yaakov. What does it mean to lose both of them? So Rashi explains that a Rivka thought, he's going to come to kill you. You're going to kill him to defend yourself. And then his kids are going to kill you back. That's what Rivka meant. But Rashi says Rivka is having a nevuah, even an unknowing nevuah. Niva v'layada ma niva, that both of them would ultimately die on the same day, which the Gemara Saita says uh, sort of happened, and that Yaakov and Esau were buried on the same day. Okay, so says Rabbi Sholeb Diskin, very beautiful. Yaakov could not care less if he would kill Esau. It's Esau, he has to kill Esau, Esau's coming to kill him. There would be no halachic problem with killing Esau. The problem was, he knew the nevuah of Rivka, that they're going to die on the same day. So if he's going to kill Esau, that would mean his own demise. So he didn't want to kill Esau, because that would ultimately lead to Yaakov himself um, somehow being harmed on that particular day. But then we come to a pshat that we've said many, many times over the years. And this pshat is brought in a number of svarim to the point where we're going to see that it's like the Kloisenberger Rebbe says, Ha'oylam oimer. Every, the whole Welt says this Pshad in Rashi. And the Pshad starts like this. We know that the Gemara in Gittin tells us that the uh, assault against the Beis HaMikdash in the times of the Bayasheni was led by a general by the name of Nero and Kezar. So Nero comes and he wants to see if he's going to be successful, so he shoots an arrow to the east, and it goes toward Yushalayim. He shoots it to the west, it goes toward Yushalayim. He shoots it to the north, he shoots it to the south. All arrows are turning toward Yushalayim. So Nero Kezar thought he would be successful. He then turns to a little kid, he says, tell me your Pasuk. So the little kid says that God says, I'm going to destroy the base of Mikdash through Edom, and then I'm going to wipe my hands with Edom. So Nero Kezar says, God wants me to do his dirty work, and then he's going to punish me? So the Gemara says about Nero Kesar, Arak, he fled. Azal, he left. The Agaya, and he converted. The Nafak, Minei, who came out of Nero Kesar? Remeir. Remeir was a descendant of Nero Kesar, which means Remeir was a descendant of Esav. Who was Remeir's, not, not Remeir, of Natana, right? But who was Remeir's Zayda? Esav Harasha. Also Yitzchak, also Avram. But that's where we differ. We come from Yaakov, Reb Meir didn't come from Yaakov. Reb Meir came from Esau. So e- Reb Meir was a descendant of Esau. <laughs> now, let's get another story about Reb Meir. The Gemara at the end of Hyrias. The Gemara tells a story, Reb Shim Gamliel was the Nasi, Reb Meir was the Chacham, and Reb Yoisi, Reb Nasin was the Avbezdin. And Reb Shim Gamliel would walk into the shul, and everyone would stand up. And Reb Meir would walk into the shul, and everyone would stand up. Reb Nasin would walk into the shul, and everyone would stand up. So Rav Shem Gamliel says to himself, uh, that, that, no, that doesn't work for me. Everyone stands up for the rabbi, the assistant rabbi, and the associate rabbi. Then what am I? No, no. Rav Shem Gamliel is going to make a takana. They stand up for me, and everyone else, they do a little shuffle. Otherwise, it's not Kabbalah Torah. Otherwise, uh, you know, if everyone's the same, then nobody, ha- nobody has the authority. So Rav Shem Gamliel conveniently made this takana on the day that Rav uh, Meir and Rav Nassim happened not to be there. So they walk into the base Medrash the next day, Rav Shem Gamliel walks in, all rise. Rav Meir walks in, Rav Nassim walks in, they say, Vaskaitan, what's going on over here? Why are, and they found out that while they were away, new legislation was made. So they said, let's get back at him. The only reason he's the Nasi, he doesn't know more than us, Fakert, we're much smarter than him, we know much more than him. He has, a, he has, a, he yarshined it. But he's not a Tamar Chacham like we are. He doesn't know uktsin like we know. Uktsin are the complex halachas of the stems of vegetables regarding Tumah Vatara. So we're going to tell him tomorrow morning, Rabbi Yid, maybe you want to give a shir on uktsin today, and he's going to be nishtaymi, he's not going to have anything to say. And then we're going to say, look, Rabbi, only someone who knows Kala Tarakula is allowed to give shir. If you don't know Kala Tarakula, you're not allowed to give shir. The Pasuk says, Mi Yamala Gvura Sashem Yashmiya Kalti Lasai. Who is worthy to speak about the Torah? Only someone who knows all of it. 
So Rav Meir and Rav Nassim had this plan, they were going to cause Rav Gamliel to be embarrassed and be deposed, like they deposed Rav Gamliel, his uh, Zayda. Fine. That night, there was a man by the name of Rabbi Yaakov ben Karshi. He overhears the whole plan. So he says, Oy vai, this is going to be bad news. Can you imagine what they're going to report on the front cover of the Yeshiva World New, whatever it is? So he started, he, he went up into the attic and he took out Uktsin and he starts chazering Uktsin the whole night. Uktsin, 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 Uktsin. So Mishim Gamliel overhears, he says, well, why is this guy chazering Uktsin? It must be, I need to know this. So he pays attention, he learns Uksin. The next morning, Rameir says, Zogeber. He says, what do you want me to say? Uksin. No problem. And he says the Uksin over like nobody's business. He said, if I wouldn't have learned it last night, I would have been in big trouble. But you almost got me. Therefore, Rameir, I'm not saying, out of here, you're out! Get out of here! You cannot come into the base matters. The problem was... They were the biggest Tamil Chacham, so there were Shilas in the base matters that only Rameir and Rav Nassim knew the answers to. So they wrote it on a settle, they folded it up, and they tossed it out the window to Rameir and Rav Nassim. So Rav Yossi says, what's going on? The Torah is outside, what are we doing inside? So Rav Shem Gamliel said, bring them back, but we're not going to stay over from Rameir anymore. From now on, whenever we quote Rameir, his new name is Achiram. Achiram, someone else. So Achiram. Ah, oh, so now that we know Rameir's name is Achirim, says the Sefer Peninim Yukarim, he says, this pshat, Shamati, I heard it, says the Paradis Yosef, this pshat, Ro'isi, I saw it, now the Peninim Yukarim is like a collection of very sharp vertlach. Paradis Yosef is a collection of Polish Torah. Okay? I just want to show you how widespread this, this pshat is. Mayana Shel Torah is like the classic... Uh, Collection of Divrei Torah. My Yonashal Torah was my great grandfather's Chavrusa. My Yonashal Torah was Rabbi Alexander Zusha Friedman. He learned with my great grandfather in Chachmei Leblen. So that's also Sochet Shavat Torah, Chasidish Torah. Chavatzelas Hasharon is a Lomdish Sefer. He says that this was uh, taught. This this Dvar Torah is well well spread, widespread in the Batei Midrashim. And the Kloisenberg Rebbe says about this Pshat Ha'olam Mefarshim. The Velt says over. The pshat is like this. Yaakov wasn't afraid if he would kill Esau. What does he care if he kills Esau? Esau's coming to kill him. What he was worried is, Esau was the Zayd of Rameir. Rameir is called Achirim. Yaakov was afraid if he kills Esau, he's going to knock off Rameir. There'll never be a Rameir. Like when Moshe Rabbeinu killed the Mitzri, it says, Vayar... He had to look into the future to see if anybody would come out of this person. So too, Yaakov looked into the future. He saw out of Esav would come Rameir, Achirim, and therefore he was afraid. Shema Yaroy Achirim. Now, if you want, there's an interesting shear on something called TorahAnytime.com about why didn't Rashi just say Shema Yaroy Rameir? Why refer to Rameir specifically in the name that he was called after he was thrown out of the base medrash? Just, just, so that we, we, there's a pshat there, we said over from Rapinchas Friedman, that why we dafka needed the Rameir who post, post Achir, not pre Achir. But tonight we're going to discuss as follows. Tonight we want to discuss why specifically at this juncture in time was Yaakov Avinu so concerned to preserve Rameir? Like, here he is, he's encountering Esau, his life is on the line, his family's on the line, he's heading back to Eretz Yisrael, and what's on his mind? Rameir. Like, why is Rameir on his mind at this particular juncture? Just to say over, there's a beautiful Dvar Torah, in the Sefer Divrei Torah of the Munkacher. He says, uh, there's a Pasuk in Mishle. Pasuk in Mishle says like this, Daga da'aga belevish, if there's worry in a person's heart, yesichena la'acherem. He should say it over to others. You know, you ever, sometimes people come to you and they're mamish broiges and they're uh, and they're angry and they're upset and, and they're, they're, they're troubled and they're anxious and, and they speak to you. And then they feel much better. And they say, thank you so much, you really helped me. And the whole time you're thinking, there's nothing I could do to help this person. And you, and you didn't help them. And they, why, why, why are they so grateful? The answer is there's a rule. 
Don't, want, don't keep things bottled up. When Sometimes you need to get something off your chest. The, the Pasuk says initially, Da'aga belev ish yisichen al achim. If you're worried about something, tell somebody about it. It, will, it helps you unload. It's a Pasuk initially. By the way, the Chafetz Chaim quotes it lahalacha. The Chafetz Chaim says, Efsher. I'm afraid to say this, but, but the Chafetz Chaim says this, maybe. He says, let's say you, you're very angry about something. And you, you want to tell somebody, not letoyelas, not letoyelas. But you're so upset about it, the toyelas is, you're going to get it off your chest. It could be, the Chavetz Chaim says, that that's called Lashonar letoyelas. Now, that's a very dangerous heter. The Maestro Chavetz Chaim says, Efshar, that there's a real toyelas in saying things. Now, ask your local Orthodox rabbi whether this is a legitimate. Chavetz Chaim's Lashonar says, it could be that's called letoyelas. So, the Bale Darshanim say as follows. When you're worried about something, we know there's a minigan klal Yisrael, that when somebody's in sorrow, when you, lose a, when you have a lost object, when you're troubled by something, when you need something, there's an ancient minig Yisrael, you put money in tzedakah of Rameir Balanes, and you say, So there's a concept. When there's worry in your heart, say it over. Who do you say it over to? Tell Rameir about it. That's what you see. It refers to Reb Meir. That's the school of Tzedakah Le'il and Ishmael's from Meir Balanas. Fine. But what we want to discuss tonight mm-hmm. is why, particular at this juncture of time, is Yaakov Inu worried about Reb You would think this would be the furthest thing on his mind. Okay. So let's say as follows. That's not the same Reb Meir. Same Reb Meir. The guy who comes collecting for the Tzedakah, Reb Meir Balanas, it happens not to be the Tanner Mayor, but his tzedakah was founded uh, based on the Tanner Mayor. Yes, yeah, Rameir Balanes is the Tanner Mayor. Okay. Now, we we know we've had many many shurim that one of the landmark uh, contributions of Rameir is his machloekus with Rabbi Huda. Rabbi, and even though, even though Shlomo, do we ever paskin like Rameir? We never paskin like Rameir, right? Except for the list that you gave me that's in my pocket. But besides that. The Klal and Shas, the Gemara Ervin says that we never paskin like Rameir, lo yardu chachamim l'soif daidoi. But there's one instance where Rameir argues on Rabbi Huda that we paskin like Rameir, and that is, what is the relationship of Klal Yisrael to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Rabbi Huda says, when we act like a kid, we are a kid. Bizman she'oysen mitzana shalmakayim, we're called banim. Bizman she'ein oysen mitzana shalmakayim, we're called avadim, we're not Hashem's children. You know, you can't try that at home. If let's say, you know, you're walking in the street and your kid is acting like a Meshuggah, right? And somebody says, who's this kid? I don't know, I, I, I found him somewhere and I'm just holding on to him until I find his true parents. It doesn't work. Your kid is your kid is your kid. It doesn't matter how they act, your kid is your kid. <coughs> but Rabbi Huda says, not with Kal Yisrael. If you act like a kid, you're God's kid. If you don't act like a kid, you're his slave, you're his servant. But Rameir famously marshals four psukim, and Rameir holds ben kach, or ben kach nekram banim. Then no matter what you do, no matter how you act, no matter how sinful a yid is, ben kach, ben kach nekram banim. Rameir cites the pasuk, banim, loy, uh, banim sechalim, foolish children. And the Gemara says, well, maybe only if you're foolish, but not if you don't have emuna. no. The Gemara in Kedusha number 23, Lamed Vav. Even if you don't have a muna, you're still called God's kid. Even if you're a mushchus, uh, Rameir says you're called banim mashchisim. And not only are you always called banim, you're called b'nei kel chai. You're called a gutta yingala no matter what. That's the shoot of Rameir. Bein kachu, bein kach nekram banim. That's, now, I'm going to tell you a chiddush. In the past, we've given a number of reasons, and I'll, I'll review them like in one minute, why this is the one exception that we pass on like Rameir. The Rajvah writes in two chuvas that the reason why this is the one exception we pass in like Rameir is because Rameir cites four psukim. So since the psukim are mashma like him, we pass in like him. Yeah? The Emes Liakov, one of the early Rav Shaltiel, and also the Samar Rebbe, they both say the same thing, that the reason we pass in like Rameir here is even, what's the reason we typically don't pass in like Rameir? Because the rabbis don't understand him. That's when it's machloik is relevant to this world. But how God treats us is relevant to God. God is certainly understanding of the depth of Rameir Shita, so therefore when it comes to this machloik, we pass in like Rameir. Rebbe Vadi Yosef writes, 
that the reason we pass him like Rameir is because Rabbi Akiva throughout Shas also holds we're always called Banim, because Rabbi Akiva and Baba Basra holds that you're allowed to give tzedakah mm-hmm. even when it's Enois and Ritzen Makaim, because we're not like Avadim, we're like Banim. I in the earlier Shurim. Today, today we're going to learn a new reason why we pass him like Rameir. I found in a Sefer, um, it's called Leket Perushe Agada of Reb Tzuriel Yechiel, Reb Moshe Tzuriel, Reb Moshe Yechiel Tzuriel. Number 35. He quotes Rev Yehudalei Maimon, who is one of the founders of Mosad Rav Kook. He says a, a, a Yesoid from Toysus. That almost always when Rameir is in a Brysa, Rameir is quoted first. And in this Brysa, Rameir is quoted last. Why? To teach that in this instance, Rameir is the final word. That we pass him like Rameir. That's another Raya that in this particular instance we pass him like Rameir. Fine. Now, we know that in the end of days and in the Galos, there are Midrashim that say that the Umay Sa'ilam turned to the Banisham and they say, you know, Manishtanu Elo Me'elo. What's the difference? Why do you still love Kal Yisrael? Why do you show favoritism to Kal Yisrael? Why do you countenance Kal Yisrael? Why do they deserve your attention? And that's a tough question. Why do we deserve the favoritism of Hashem? There's only one answer to that the Sheet of Rav Meir. And that is, if you go to a store, you take your kids to a store, and you buy them a toy. Will some little kid run over? Why are you buying him a toy? Why don't you buy me a toy? It's not fair. Why do you count in the same? You say, hey, pal, because th- he's my kid and I don't know you from home in the wall. Uh, you know, it could be you behave better than him. You're more polite than him. Maybe, you're, but he's my kid. You're not my kid. So the only answer, the only salvation, and the only defense of Klal Yisrael in the Golos is the sheet of Reb Meir. Ben kach, ben kach nekram bonim. That's why the Ben Yoyada writes, in Mesech the Kedushin Naflam Edvav, that there's only one Tana that's buried standing up, and that's Reb Meir. And that's because Reb Meir Shita stands up for Klal Yisrael throughout the length of the Golos. Now, coming back to this week's parsha, Or Rav Huna also. Rav Huna is buried standing up. Right, the Gemara Moi Kot, Rav Huna is buried. But Rav Meir is a Tana, okay. Rav Meir was, Rav, what? Rav Huna. Yeah, as he's quoting the Gemara Moi Katan. Gemara says Rav Huna also. Correct, good. But, okay, coming back to Parashat Vayishlach, okay? The Ramban learns throughout Sefer Bereshis that Sefer Bereshis is called the book of Yitzira, the book of creation. Because Parashat Bereshis speaks about the creation of the world. What about the whole book of Genesis? The whole book is, speaks about the creation of the history of Kal Yisrael through the procedure of Maseyav Eisim and Labanim. Whatever would eventually happen to the Jewish people was created through the narrative of Sefer Bereshis. Now, the Ramban learns that Parshas Vayishlach is the Parsha of Golos. Yaakov Avinu's encounter with Esav is the Maseyav Eisim and Labanim for the years 0 to the year 2019 when Mashiach will come. Parshas Vayishlach is the parsha of Golos. The Ramban writes in the beginning of Vayishlach that this parsha was written to teach that Hashem saved his Avdoi and he redeemed him from someone mightier than him. And it teaches that Yaakov Avinu did not rely on his own righteousness and he made human hishtadlus to save himself. And this parsha represents and creates and portends and is a pre-enactment of everything that would happen to the Jewish people in Golos. And therefore the Ramban in three places in, the, in this week's parsha discusses how parsha Vayishlach is the paradigm of Golos. In fact, he writes that whenever the Tanom and Amaram had to go to Rome and had to interact with the Roman government, they would always study parsha Vayishlach and they learned insight how to deal with the Roman government from parsha Vayishlach. So, one of the main limudim they learned was that never allow Romans to accompany you like, where do we learn that from? We learn it from Yaakov. Yaakov, Esav says to Yaakov, you know, I'll, let's go together. And Yaakov said, you go ahead, I'll catch up with you later. You know, there's a story about uh, the Panovich Arav. He was on some train. I hope I'm getting the story correct. He was on a train, and he saw some uh, hoodlums, um, you know, eyeing him. And he knew they were up to no good. And he saw they were watching him. And uh, he saw that they were going to get off at his stop. So the train door opens, and he sees them on his side, and he was mechabe them. He said, after you. 
they got out, he jumped back in, and the train continued. So they said, Rabbi, where'd you get this from? He said, Pashas Vayishlach. Yaakov Inu says, you go ahead and I'll catch up with you later. So, so um, the Ramban even says, Rav Yanai, whenever he would deal with Rome, he would study Pashas Vayishlach. One time, and he always made sure not to let Romans accompany him. One time the Romans accompanied him, he ended up losing a lot of money. Why, says Ramban? Kabbalah, Biyadam, Shazu, Pashas Golos. They had a tradition, Pashas Vayishlach is a parish of Golos. In fact, Rabbi Hanan brings from the Gra that the beginning of Ayishlach is a parish of Golos, and then when Yaakov actually encounters Esav, so first he puts uh, the Bnei Hashvachos, and then Bilan Zilpa, and then the Bnei Leia, and then Leia, and then Bnei Rachel, and then Rachel. And that represents the Ikva Sada Meshicha. Then the end of days, the leaders of the Jewish people will be the enemies of the Jewish people, the Erev Rav, will be the uh, the those who have abandoned true Judaism. The fact that the Bnei HaShvachos goes first, represent in the end of days, the G'day Yisrael will be in the back seat, and the leaders will be, you know, people of uh, ill repute, so to speak. But what we learn is, Parshas Vayishlach is the Parsha of Golos, proceeding with the Ikvasa de Meshicha. And therefore, if there is anyone who we have to secure, and we have to preserve, and we have to ensure is around, and we have to make sure is going to protect Klal Yisrael in the end of days, in the Galos, in the Ikvasa the Meshicha, it is none other than Reb Meir. We have to be so careful, Yaakov Inu is so worried, that in the, in the times of the Galos, in the Ikvasa the Meshicha, Yaakov Inu was so scared, he was so frightened, he was so afraid, what's going to be if I kill Esav, what's going to be with Achirim, what's going to be with Reb Meir? Because with that Reb Meir, we're never getting out of the Galos. Because ultimately, the only way the Rebbe Hashem could defend Kal Yisrael is Shitas Rameir Ben Kach Ben Kach Okay, that's the first part. Interestingly, there's a stira in Shas. Because we now like to think of Rameir as, you know, he's a warm, all embracing, loving Jew. Everyone's good, everything flies, everyone's good, God loves everyone all the time. But there seems to be a stira. Reb Meir says in Mesech Tavoy Dezar, number 33, on the Avzayin Amenalef, If an Amaretz or a Gazlin does tshuva, God will never accept them. Divri Reb Meir. Reb Meir takes a very harsh view. Amaratzim cannot do tshuva. Gazlanim cannot do tshuva. Ayin betoys v'sham. Rabbi Huda says, yeah, they could do some tshuva. A mayor holds, no tshuva! They're done, they're one and done, they're out. Rabbi Huda, is that consistent with Benkach, or Benkach, Nekron, Banim? Is that consistent no matter what you do? You could be foolish, you could be no Amuna, you could be Ovid Avezara, you're a Bnei Kelchai. Furthermore, you remember the Gemara in Brachas and Nafyod? Hani bar yoyne dehave b'shevavusad Rameir. You had bandits in Rameir's neighborhood. And they're annoying him. They're getting under his skin. So uh, he didn't know what to do. So he dove and they should drop dead. By the way, and if they would drop dead, that would probably take care of the problem. That usually resolves the issue. So if somebody has a problem, you know, Rameir, just dove and they should die. And uh, that effectively removed the situation. So his wife, who was his wife? Bruria. Bruria said, well, what are you doing? Because you're reading the Pasuk, Yitamu Chata Min Aretz? Does it say, Chaitim, remove the sinners from the world? Chatoim, sinners! And it says, Bruyo, look at the end of the Pasuk. It says, Rosham Eneinam. When there's no more sin, it says, Yitamu Chatoim. Sin will be removed. When sin will be removed, Rosham Eneinam. There won't be any more wicked. Why? You davening they should die. Daven they should do tshuva. So, Rameir Daven that they should do tshuva and it worked. It almost seems like Reb Meir and Rabbi Huda take the opposite sides of Reb Meir and Bruria. When it comes to Rabbi Huda, Reb Meir is all loving and he's, he considers every Jew a beloved son of God. And when it comes to the Bar Yoinim, it seems like Bruria is uh, all loving and everyone's a Ben of Hashem. And Reb Meir, like he said in Avodah Zara, is davening that these wicked should die. Does Reb Meir hold Ben Kach Ben Kach Nekron Banim? Or does he not hold Ben Kach Ben Kach Nekron Banim? Rameir contradicts himself. I'm going to ask you one more contradiction. P. 
Pirkei Avos. Look at number 19. Rabbi Akiva Oimer. Okay, this is Rabbi Akiva. And then a Mishnah Yudalid. You know what else Rabbi Akiva said? Hu haya Oimer. Chaviv Adam Shenev Rabbi Tzalem. God, uh, a man is beloved because he was created in the image of God. Chiba Yisera Noidas Loi. An extra special love has been endowed to man that um, he was told that he is created in God's image. Shanemar Kivitzam Lakimasasim. Chaviv in Yisrael Shenikru Banim Lamakam. Kal Yisrael is beloved. They're called children to Hashem. An extra love is that Hashem told them, You're my children. Who is the Baal Hamemra? Chaviv in Yisrael Shenikru Banim Lamakam. Who is the Baal Hamemra, Chaviv in Yisrael, Shenikru Banim Lamakim? In Perkei Avais? Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva is the Tana Mishnah Yigemol, and Mishnah Yadad, Hu Hayoimer. Comes Avais to Reb Nassin, in Perk Lamites. Reb Meir Oimer, Chaviv Adam, Shenev Reb Tzalem. Chaviv in Yisrael, Shenikru Banim Lamakim. What happened? It's not Rabbi Akiva anymore, it's Reb Meir. Why is the why is the Balamemra in Perkei Avos Rabbi Kiva, and the Balamemra in Avos Rav Nosson Rav Meir? So there's a commentary on on Avos Rav Nosson called Binyan Yehoshua. So he wants to suggest maybe 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 Rav Meir and Avos Rav Nosson is saying it in the name of his Rebbe Rabbi Akiva because Rav Meir was a Talmud of Rabbi Akiva. There's a Sefer Nachalas Davash who wants to say. Really, Reb Meir started off a Rabbi Hudunik. He held, we're Avdei Hashem, we're not Bonim. And then Rabbi Akiva taught him, no, we're Bonim. So he was Chayzer. Originally, Reb Meir held, Amayaretz can't do Tshuva, and Gazlanim can't do Tshuva, because we're Avadim and an Eved can't do Tshuva. But Rabbi Akiva set him straight. So after Rabbi Akiva said in Perki Avais, Chaviv and Yisrael, Shenik Rubanim, Reb Meir also said, Chaviv and Yisrael, Shenik Rubanim. <coughs> And we're going to suggest a new pshat tonight. Reb Meir is not saying it in the name of Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Akiva wasn't the one who, stre- who set Reb Meir straight. You know who set Reb Meir straight? Bruria set him straight. Reb Meir learned from his wife, Ben Kachel, Ben Kachnik Ramban. Reb Meir started out saying in Avoy Duzara, Ameya Aretz and Gazlanim can't do tshuva. Reb Meir started out by saying in Mesech de Bracha is the Chaitim Shaddai, because he held like Rabbi Huda. But then when his wife said, no, it doesn't say Yitamu Chaitim, it says Yitamu Chataim. And Burya said, you need to daven that they should do tshuva. And Taka Rameir daven that the Bar Yoyim should do tshuva. And the Tfilo was Niskabia. Rameir accepted Burya Shita. And now Rameir held, Ben Kachu, Ben Kach Nikram Bonim. And I found this in a number of Svarim. That who is responsible for a mayor's shita being kachav being on the ground bottom? Bruria. So if you take a look in the Sefer Kol Taira. Now, by the way, I'll just tell you something interesting. The Sefer Leket Perushe Agada of Rav Moshe Yechiel Tzuria. He points out that Rav Meir Shita Banim Ben Kach Ben Kach in the Quran Banim seems to be a stira to what he when he davened that the Chaitim should die. And he wants to say, no, Rameir only holds Klal Yisrael as a nation are all Banim. But it could be any particular Yid, could be an absolute Oisfar, if that's not a... The Rameir never said every single Jew is a Ben. He said Banim as a, as a nation, as collectively. But individually, no, you know, no, no guarantees. <coughs> but I found the numbers of Svarim in uh, not any Svarim that I ever heard of, but in the Sefer Kol Tyro, which is a journal... He wants to answer that Rameir is shita na vaydazar, that Amiyaretz can't do tshuva, is not a steer to what he says in Kedushin, ben kach ben kach ben kram banim, because after Bruria taught him, you kadavin for Rasham to do tshuva, Rameir uh, conceded that we're always called banim. And there's a Sefer Mishpere Yom, uh, Sefer Mishpere Yom also wants to say that the Gemara Chagiga says on the Tesvav HaMebez that um, they found Elio, they asked Elio, what's, what's Rivan Hashem doing in Shamayim? And uh, he said, Rav is saying over Torah in the name of everyone except for Rav Meir. So he said, why not Rav Meir? He said, because Rav Meir learns from Acher. Rav Meir learns from Elisha ben Abuya. 
So they said, well, what's the problem? Rameer found a shell, Rameer found a seed, and he threw away the shell. Meaning he took from Acher the good stuff. So then the Rebbe Hashem said over from Rameer a beautiful teaching that the Rebbe Hashem feels bad even when Rishaim suffer. Which seems consistent with Rameer's Shita, Ben Kach, Ben Kach, Banam. So the Mishbara Yam says it's not a stira. It's not a stira because after Bruria told Rameir you could daven for the wicked to do tshuva, Rameir changed to shita and Rameir said, Ben kach, ben kach, nekram banim. Likewise, the Nachlas Devash also says, the Rameir started off like shita's Rabbi Huda, and then when Bruria told him, it doesn't say yitamu chaitim, it says yitamu chatam, Rameir switched to shita. So back to the ranch, Yaakov Avinu foresees the Golas. This is Parshas Vayishlach. He knows in the Golas there's only one thing that's going to save the day. Shitas Rameir. But friends, is saving Rameir going to help us? It ain't going to help us. You know why it's not going to help us? Because Rameir started off holding. We're not always Banu Mamakayim. He started off holding, like Rabbi Huda, that only when we're Oisin Ritzan Hashem But now we're in the Golas. We're not Oisin Ritzan Hashem so Rameir is not going to help us. So who do we have to save next? Who do we have to discover next? Besides saving Rameir, whose life do we need to save? Bruria. So that's the next job in Parshas Vayishlach. We gotta, we gotta rescue Bruria. Rescue Bruria? We're gonna rescue Bruria in Parshas Vayishlach. Her name's not mentioned in Parshas Vayishlach. You have to look closely. Because after Yaakovinu encounters Esav, he heads toward Eretz Yisrael. First stop, Shechem. Dina goes out. Dina is abducted by Shechem ben Chamar. Now, what Chamar's parents were thinking when they said, V'yikare Shemai, that's beyond the scope of today's shir. But at least he called his son Shechem. And Shechem abducts Dina. Shechem violates Dina. And he, they come back to his people. And he says, you know, I think this is a good shidduch. I want to marry this lady. And we'll get along with the Jews. The Jews will bring us business. They'll bring us commerce. They'll make us successful. And there's plenty of land to go around. Hinei rachavas yodayim. It's a wide land. There's enough for everyone. Says the Arizal, a great tradition. Now, backtrack for a moment. Who is Bruria? The daughter of Rabbi Hanina ben Tradia. The Gemara Navoy de Zara says that, by the way, there's a whole amazing story with Bruria that Rameir once said, Noshem Daitan Kalois. And Bruria was not happy with that teaching. And Rameir sent one of his Talmidim to persuade Bruria. And she fell for it. And when she realized she fell for it, and she was masking that Noshem Daitan Kalos, she basically went off the deep end. And Rameir had to run away. But that, that's for another occasion. Okay? But, and what that means, uh, the, the, don't ask now. Okay? So, Bruria, and who's Bruria? The Gemara Nabi Dezara says, Bruria was the daughter of Rabbi Hanina ben Trajoin. Says Rabbi Nunisim Gan on the Gemara Brachas, who is this Bruria? Bitoi Shah Rabbi Hanina ben Trajoin. Back to the Arizal. The Arizal says there's a concept that in the forces of the greatest Tuma lay dormant and trapped the holiest Neshamas. Because when Adam Rishon ate from the Yitzhadas, many holy Neshamas were taken captive and they're only released on certain occasions. Sometimes only an Avira of Arayas could release the holiest souls. For example, when Shechem abducted Dina, in Dina was the soul of Rabbi Hanina ben Tradyoin after she was abducted by Shechem, Shechem had in him, Shechem, excuse me, Shechem had in him the soul of Rabbi Hanina ben Tradyan. And when he lived with Dina, Rabbi Hanina ben Tradyan was released and brought over to Klal Yisrael. And this is Marumas in the Pasuk. Hine Rachavas Yodayim. Rachavas is Rosh Tevois, Rabbi Hanina ben Tradyan. This is number 31, the Arizal and Sharap Sukim. The Arizal writes in the Kutei Torah. And the Arachayim HaKadosh quotes it from the Talmidei Ari. Look at number 32. Gam Lefa'amim. Also sometimes. Be'emtsos devekos ha-nefesh ha Through the means of the attachment of a holy soul. Be'nefesh ha with an impure soul. La'ainsa in a coerced way. Toitsi nefesh chaya It will release a living spirit. 
Vahusoid, this is the secret of Vatidbak Navshoi Bedina Bas Yaakov, Sheshoava Nefesh Dina Akdoisha, Lenefesh Dosha Mina, Dina soul sucked out, so to speak. The holy soul that was Toich Shem, who was he? Says the Ari Reb Chanina Ben Tradio and Rashi Tevis Rachavas Yadayim. So I always wondered, what's the juxtaposition of Yaakov's encounter with Esav and Shem's violation of Dina? Maybe, 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 Yaakov Avinu, this is the parish of Golos. In the Golos, the only salvation we have is the one who's buried standing, the, the salvation of Rameir Meir Shita, Bein Kachel, Bein Kachel, Bein Kachel. The only thing is Rameir Meir doesn't hold Bein Kachel, Bein Kachel, Bein Kachel, Bein Meir was only convinced that by the daughter of Chanina Ben Tradion. So Yvon Shalom says, Yaakov, you really want Rameir? Meir? We'll give him to you. I'll make sure Yaakov Avinu doesn't even know why he's going to Shechem. He thinks this is a big tragedy. He thinks the violation of Dina is going to destroy his family. Little does Yaakov Avinu realize that Yibbam Shem is Masaviv Svivois, that through this incident, Reb Chanina ben Tradion joined Chal Yisrael through him. Bruria and ultimately came the Shita that Yaakov Avinu wanted in the first place, which was Shita Srameir, that Ben Kach, Ben Kach, Nekron Banim. Now, one last thing. What? One last thing. This week's Haftarah. This week's Haftarah. Avadya. Who's Avadya? Now, Avadya is, a, what is it, 21 psukim of the downfall of Edom. And why did, I, why did Avadya prophesy about Edom? So the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Avadya lived among two Rishoim, Achav and Izevel. And then he didn't learn from their bad behavior. He'll prophecy about the downfall of Esau, who learned, by, who learned from Yitzchak and Rivka, and didn't learn from their good behavior. Now listen to this. Amar Ephraim Maksha. Ephraim Maksha says, number 36, Talmidoy Shel Remeir, the student of Remeir. Mishum Remeir, in the name of Remeir. Oivadio gera doimi hoyo. Oivadio was a, a Edomite convert. Vahainu da amri inshi. That's what people say. Meneu be abba, nezel be narga. From the forest itself comes the handle for the axe. You ever hear that expression? From the forest itself comes the handle for the axe. What does that mean? You have a woodsman. He chops down a tree. He makes a handle for the axe. And that axe chops down the forest. Basically, the concept that what brings the downfall is usually the thing itself. You know, Paroi was afraid that the Jewish savior would rescue the Jews and uh, take them out of Egypt. So what does he do? He makes a decree to destroy all the Jewish boys. So what happens? God says, you think you're going to destroy the Jewish boys? Your own daughter is going to see one kid floating. He's gonna bring, she's going to bring her into your palace. You're going to pay for his uh, formula. You're going to pay for his food. You're going to take him to nursery. You're going to wake up in the middle of the night. You're going to teach him how to be a king. And he's going to destroy your entire country. From the forest itself comes a handle for the axe. Who prophesied? Who told the world that Oivadio was an Edomite convert? Remeir, the Gemara says. Remeir says Oivadio was an Edomite convert. So I remember I was learning Oivadio. The Abarbanel says, How did Reb Meir know Oivadia was an Edomite convert? Because Reb Meir was an Edomite convert. And he knew exactly what was going on. Vas titzach in Edom. That's why Reb Meir was the one who ultimately recorded the prophecy of Oivadia. And what Oivadia's prophecy means, because they're the same mishpacha. Oivadia is Edomite convert. Reb Meir was an Edomite convert. But Baruch Hashem, Yaakov Vinus Tfilah, was able to be Matzil Rameir, and ultimately Rav Hashem ensured that Rameir taught the world the Shita of Ben Kach Ben Kach Nikra Banim, and Parshas Vayishlach, which is the Parsha of Golos, the Parsha that we need Rameir more than ever, and the Parsha of Ikvus of the Mashicha, we learn how the Rav Hashem orchestrated events to preserve Rameir, to preserve Bruria, and ultimately to preserve Klal Yisrael through the great salvation of Elaka the Mayor Aneni. And uh, we should be zoicha that this should be omen for us at at soif kol hadoresh. Goyach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.